So let's start with an empty project set to 800 by 600 pixels. Create three layers, one for the background, one for the gameplay, and one for the user interface. Set the background layer to a solid black color. Activate Short Grid and Snap to Grid and set it to 40 by 30 pixels. Create the first sprite object, name it Boundary and give it a solid color. This sprite will be invisible. Use this sprite to build the limits of the layout. Create one as the bottom, two on the sides, and one big on top. This big one will represent the river. Now, if you watch the Space Invader series or the Asteroid series, we've been creating different objects for each game object, but now we'll use the same objects in different ways, using variables to differentiate them. So select any of the boundaries and create an instance variable type, and set it to text. Then assign the values water, left, right, and back to our boundaries. Now in the gameplay layer, we'll create our frog. Here I'm using two sprites to create an animation. Be sure to set your sprite facing right or zero degrees. Check the origin at center, change the animation speed and set it to loop. Now adjust the collision polygons to somewhat closer to the actual frog. And apply it to both frames. Place the frog at the bottom center of the screen. Add a keyboard object to control the frog. And in the event sheet, create a keyboard condition. On key pressed, right arrow, set frog x to current x plus 60 which means two grid squares to the right. Control drag to copy and left arrow and X minus 60. Repeat the same for up and down arrow. 
but remember that y values is inverted, so going up means negative, and going down means positive. Okay, our frog is moving, but we need to rotate it, so add a set angle to each action. Remember again that in Construct2, angle is clockwise. To prevent it from going outside the layout, you can fix it with a bound to layer behavior. But this is another approach. Add another condition, boundary. Add another condition, boundary, compare variable type equals to right, and another, frog is overlapping boundary, but this time invert the condition, so it reads, when your right arrow is pressed and your frog is not overlapping the right side boundary, then move. Do the same with the left and down conditions, but of course change the variable to left and back. Now create a new event if frog is overlapping boundary. And boundary, variable type equals to water. Then destroy frog. Right now, just rearrange your boundaries so they work properly. Okay, by now, in the next video, we'll be creating our obstacles. See you then!